Good evening, Popo Tolipo. Uh, and then uh, Urban Gospel Reloaded. Good evening, good evening. Is that moment uh, where we're getting to learn something from the Lord? Na leo nilisema kwa mba tuko na mgeni kutoka Nigeria. Anajulikana kama Apostle uh, Azetu. Azetu. Uh, welcome Apostle. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Antonio. Yes, when I was saying Azetu, 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 uh, it, it's kind of sound like a name from Western Kenya. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So when I say Azetu, some people, some people from Western Kenya will say that is our person. <laughs> That's wow. our man. That's a good one. Welcome that to name Kenya. actually means the man with a strong heart. Wow. Yes. The man with a strong heart. Yeah, the man with a strong heart. And actually I have seen that. Yes. Welcome, welcome to our radio station. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. the it's program is called Urban Gospel Reloaded. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, and here we speak to the people uh who are very busy in life, who, 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 are, who are facing so many challenges on yeah. the street, working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and we speak to them and get them encouraged even as they go wait to go to work tomorrow. Okay. In the morning as they wake up to go to work okay. we prepare them to get into the monday with the energy with the oh, strength okay. and to be strong just the way you say that uh, yes. a strong man mm. yeah mm. welcome thank you yeah let them know who you are yes my name is apostle moses azetu mm -hmm. uh, all the way from nigeria um by the grace of god i'm the senior pastor of first people of grace international ministries mm -hmm. based in lafia Lafia is a city, it's a state under Nasrallah state yes. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also oversee other few branch of churches. Mm -hmm. uh, just came into um, Kenya precisely um, about nine days ago and uh, came here on a mission walk. And I've been preaching in two churches, mm -hmm. uh, uh, three churches precisely in Kitali. I was able to minister in the Lateran um, Pentecostal Church. Mm -hmm. uh, Apostle Emos Waswa, and also been preaching for my friend Apostle John Njia, the Ark of Worship uh, Church International. Mm -hmm. And I was also privileged to preach for Bishop uh, Stephen Njia today. That's um, Redeemer's Faith uh, Ministries mm -hmm. somewhere within the town. Okay. So I think I've really enjoyed my stay in this town. It's a privilege to be in this radio station wow. to pass a message to all the people that are listening right now okay. i trust god that uh, by the time we be through this message that our eyes shall be open to so many things that uh, uh, have really been behind our challenges mm -hmm. that we are not actually aware of so thank you okay yeah and in many times when kenyans hear a nigerian person in kenya mm. uh, they remember of the movies they remember of the, <laughs> the chuchu -choo things eh? <laughs> the magics in the nigerian yes movies. i've actually interacted with few of them and uh, a lot of them when i ask them when would they come to nigeria they, they tell me i don't want to come to nigeria because i'm afraid yes there are witches i, I watch mm -hmm. all nigerian movies get me scared but i say all those things they are just acting actually even though they are a reality there's no nation that doesn't have witches yes even in america there are witches uh, yes, and, and, and some <laughs> some of them will believe that that is true. Yes. And we cannot have a man of God coming from Nigeria <laughs> because the Nigerian people uh, are involved in magic and yeah, stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ministry in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, we we seeing great worshippers coming from Nigeria. We are seeing great men of God yes. who are preaching to the world. Yeah, coming God from Nigeria. has actually honor our nation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I believe it is because of the increase of wickedness. Yes. Because even in the, in the days of the Bible, um, as a result of the increase of weakness, wickedness, every time there is increase in wickedness, mm -hmm. God will always raise the man. God cannot come down by himself. Mm -hmm. He will have to raise men that will represent him, wow. that will bring an end to wickedness. Wow. So, in Nigeria, we have a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, darkness is all over. We have challenges here and there. So, that's the major reason why I believe uh, God is... Uh, on the daily basis, raising men. Mm -hmm. We quite, have quite numbers of great men of God that God have raised uh, in the nation of Nigeria who are doing exploits. Some of them are within the landmark of Nigeria. Some of them, God have sent them to other nations, wow. you know, mm -hmm. doing a great work for God. Amen. Mm. And for that reason, I'm going to give you an opportunity, a man of God, uh, to just minister to someone today, yes. speak a word today to, to one person. Then later you will be giving us your testimony. Okay. You'll be sharing. If you have a testimony, you'll be sharing with us. But okay. in the meantime, time i want to give you an opportunity to just speak a word to someone today okay 
I actually have a message, not just a word. Yes. I actually have a message because I believed somebody somewhere there listening to me. Mm -hmm. God is about to bring a liberation, bring about freedom to a family, to a, an individual that is listening to me there. I want to share briefly, you know, on a message I caption, freedom from darkness and embracing great light. Amen. Freedom from darkness and embracing great light. And before we go ahead and read the scripture, I would like us to pray, if it is possible. In the mighty name of Jesus. My King and my God, and I want to thank you for everyone who is listening to me there. It's a privilege to be on this uh, radio station this evening. And I ask, oh God, that everyone who is listening to me, who has been wallowing and walking in darkness as a result of this great truth, as it is being unveiled, their freedom shall become a reality in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'd like you to read a, a portion of scriptures. I think Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 12. From verse 12. Um... He said, now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. He said, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. The people who sat in darkness. So we are looking at freedom from darkness and embracing great light. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a very critical moment. We live in a very critical moment. We are living in a generation that is full of several challenges. The world at large right now is in need of solution. Why did I say so? Because there are troubles, there are crises. There is barely no nation you go today that you cannot find crisis. You cannot find people committing suicide. You cannot find people hanging themselves and doing all manners of things. All this thing is as a result of the reality or the existence of darkness. From the beginning of creation, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, the first problem of the world was darkness. The first problem of the world was darkness. Darkness has been the problem of light from the beginning. It may interest you to know that sickness, poverty, HIV, cancer, economic meltdown has never been the problem from the beginning. The major problem of the world from the beginning is the problem of darkness. Even God at creation was face to face with an opposition of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. God himself was face to face. So you can see that even God himself has to stand on his ground to ensure that darkness does not overrule his creation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. It is God who commanded light. So from our text where we read, the Bible says Jesus leaving Nazareth. He came and dwell at Capernaum. It was not for himself. I've been privileged to travel to Israel. Mm -hmm. I've been privileged to visit Capernaum. Capernaum is by the, by the bank of the sea. By the bank of the, the uh, uh, river Nazareth. You know. And Jesus was actually in Nazareth. I, 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 I was able to stay in Laz Nazareth, lodge in a hotel there. And I saw that Nazareth was in a city, a city just by the mountain top. And Jesus had to trek from Nazareth and came to Capernaum. Now, there is nothing to be desired in Capernaum. 
Nazareth is more developed, mm -hmm. more civilized than Capernaum. But Jesus left Nazareth and trek miles and came to Capernaum to live. Now, it was not for himself, but it was because of the people who are living in Capernaum. Why did Jesus have to leave Nazareth and come to Capernaum? Because as at that time, Capernaum was overshadowed by darkness. Now, any land or city and nation that is overshadowed by darkness, you will see all manners of atrocities. You see sickness in existence. You see wickedness in existence. You see illiteracy in existence. People don't love to go to school. You know all manners of satanic oppression as a result of the reality of darkness. So Jesus knew that until he go to Capernaum, the people cannot be free. Jesus knew that until he visit the land of Capernaum, people cannot be free. So that is why he said the people that sat in darkness, they saw great light. I believe that my coming to Kenya and Kitali precisely is not for everybody. Not actually everybody that is in darkness. But there are certain people that the devil has captured right now at the moment. They are in a crossroad. They don't know where to go. They don't know which decision to take because they are walking in darkness. They are walking in darkness. They are walking in darkness. Every time people are in darkness, God will always send his light carriers. Every time people find themselves in darkness, God will always send his light carriers. Men of God are the carriers of light that come to introduce light to humans' darkness. And I want to believe whether you are there, there. I don't know the kind of darkness you find yourself. Maybe it's a darkness of poverty. Maybe it's a darkness of sickness. Maybe it's a darkness of financial embarrassment. Maybe it's a darkness of illiteracy. Inability to go to school. But I am here with a word from the law that it is possible for you to be free. And the only way you can be free is for you to embrace the great light. And interestingly, Jesus is that great light. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus is that great light. Many people are walking and dwelling in darkness. That is the reason for their continual sorrow and captivity. Many people, millions of people, they are busy walking. They don't even know how to be free. Some of them don't, 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 don't even have access to the scripture. They don't have access to the Bible. They don't have access. So the question is, who is the author of darkness? We are talking about freedom from darkness to light. Mm -hmm. The author of darkness certainly is Satan. Satan is the author of darkness. Because anywhere there is light, darkness is not happy at all. Satan is an author of darkness. So God is, the, is not just the author of light, but God is light himself. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, he said, God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. Amen. God is light. Satan is darkness. So anyone who is serving Satan is actually dwelling in darkness. If you are serving God, it means you are walking in light. That's what the Bible says, God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. So if you are in God, mm -hmm. anything that follows darkness will not be part of you. That means you can't experience sickness. You can't experience poverty. You can't experience frustration. The question is this. The question is this. If you must be free from spiritual darkness, you must understand what darkness or, or what spiritual darkness stands. If you must be free, I want to show you a few areas or a few things that you need to do that will bring you out of darkness. What does spiritual darkness do to people specifically? When we talk about darkness, we are not talking about physical darkness. You know, because even a blind man can see in the midst of darkness. When we are talking about darkness, we are talking about spiritual darkness. So what does spiritual darkness do to people's destiny? Number one, I'd like you to understand that it brings spiritual evil covering over people's destiny. Spiritual darkness brings spiritual evil covering over people's destiny. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, when God was creating the world, the Bible said the earth was without form and void. And he said, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. Why did darkness come upon the face of the earth? Darkness wanted to overrule the creation of God. But the Bible says in the midst of that, the light of God shine in the midst of darkness. That is why I believe tonight 
that even as I am ministering right now, somebody there in darkness, the light of God, is about to arise and shine over your darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When there is spiritual covering, evil covering, over destiny, nobody sees you. Anytime that there is a spiritual evil covering over your life and destiny, nobody can see you. Nobody can help you. You can imagine why you know a lot of people in government and nobody is caring to help you. The reason is because you are covered. Darkness has the capacity to cover people. Darkness can cover your certificate. Darkness can cover your giftings. You may be gifted, but if you are under darkness, nobody will notice your gift. Nobody notice your gift. That is why there is a need for you to embrace the great light, which is Jesus. Because Jesus is the only solution to darkness. Number two, what does darkness do to people's destiny? Number two, it keeps people away from God. Darkness keeps people away from God. It keeps people away from God. That's the reason why you keep hearing preaching. You, hear, you see all manners of preachers coming up. We preach here, preach in radio, preach through books, preach through te television. And yet there are people who are not consigned. They don't even care. They are not even ready to listen. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't blame them. It's because they are covered by darkness. Darkness has a way to keep people away from God. But I pray for somebody there. Maybe preachers have preached to you. Mm -hmm. Somebody has tried everything possible to witness to you. And you've been rejecting the voice of God. But it's all because you've been walking in darkness. But today I pray for you that the light of God will shine in your direction. Mm -hmm. And you will return back to God. Mm -hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number four thing that darkness does is that it makes men to become wanderers for bread. People begin to wander from one spot to another looking for food to eat. There are people that don't pray for bread. As they wake up, there, are, there is food all over. But why are you wandering up and down? Looking for bread. Bread is not supposed to be a prayer point for God's children. Bread. Mm -hmm. God did not create us with an intention we should pray for bread. But the reason why people pray for bread and wander for bread is because they are in darkness. Because anyone who serves God, God will always make a provision for you. God will always make a provision for you. So, number four, things that darkness does to our life is that it, 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 it makes us to wonder for bread. Number five, darkness affects men's ability to talk to God and to talk to man. Darkness has the capacity to affect your ability to talk to God. Today, we have a lot of people who can't pray. If you ask them to pray, they can't pray because they don't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. The reason is because of the reality of darkness. Job said in Job chapter 37 verse 19, he said, Now if I hold my tongue, I shall give up the ghost. That means if I hold my tongue, I shall die. There are people who can't talk to God at all. They can't even talk to their fellow men. Because of the existence of darkness that have ruptured their light. Because of the existence of darkness that have captured their life. But I pray today that as you listen to me, wherever you are listening to me from, from that the light of God will shine in your direction and gives your vocal voice strength mm -hmm. to be able to rise up to talk to God. One day a man called Blind Bartimaeus was sitting by the highway and Jesus was passing by and the man was blind. And he heard noise. He was blind, but he was not deaf. He heard noise of people. And he asked what was happening. And they told him Jesus was passing. And the man opened his mouth and began to shout, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He was a blind man, but he was not a, 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 a dumb man. He was a blind man, but he was not a deaf man. He had the capacity to open his mouth to call on to God for his help. And God came to his rescue. Yeah. There are a lot of people who can't call God. They are, they are suffering. They are going through crisis. But they can't pray. You tell them to come to church, they can't go. They, can't, they don't have the strength to look for help for themselves. That is why I believe such a, an audience, like r this radio station, is put across to reach out to some people mm -hmm. who can't move. Some are in the sick bed. Some are in the hospital. They can't move to where they can get solution. But I believe through these airwaves, they can get solution. Amen. And as I'm speaking right now, I'm releasing the healing power of God to touch you wherever you are, Amen. and the healing virtue of God to touch you wherever you are, and you can be healed right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, darkness affects people's ability to know and to understand the things of God. <laughs> there are people who don't know and they don't understand the things of God. No matter how you teach them, they can't know, except by the help of the Holy Spirit. The Bible said in Psalm 82, verse 5, He said, I said that ye are gods, but He said, They know not, neither do they understand. They walk about in darkness. I have said that ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High, but because they don't know, they shall die like ordinary men. The reason why people die prematurely is because of the inability to understand the things of God. Because if you don't understand the things of God, you can't even come to him. Because you have to come, you have to understand his things before you can come to him. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But there are people who can't come to him. Inability to understand the things of God. Mm -hmm. Number seven, darkness make people, you know, forget, forget you like a dead man. You can be alive and people have forgotten you. They think that you are dead. Why? Because you are walking in darkness. Because you are walking in darkness. Darkness makes people to forget you like a dead man. People don't even believe you are seeing existence. Why? Because you are walking in darkness. I'm about to round up. Number eight. Darkness makes your enemies rejoice over you. When you are walking in darkness or living in darkness, your enemies will always rejoice over you. In Micah chapter 3, rejoice not over me, O oh my enemy. When I sit in darkness, he said, God shall be a light to me. What if God is not a light to you? That means the enemy will rejoice over you. And we have a lot of millions of people who are living in darkness, walking in darkness, eating in darkness, surviving in darkness as a result of satanic activities. And their enemies is on the daily basis rejoicing over them. The enemy has hijacked them, has, 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 has hooked them, is taking advantage of their inability to open their mouth to talk to God and mm -hmm. ask God for help. That is what darkness do to people. Oh. And lastly, what does darkness do to people? Darkness makes people blind towards God. Darkness makes people blind towards God. It makes people to be blind towards God. They can't see. They can't see. Even when God come around them, they can't see. Even when God send the men of God around them, they can't perceive it. They can't see it. Because they are blind. And because they are blind, they can't see it. And it is my prayer today that if only you can embrace Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because there is only two ways in receiving great light. Number one, receive the gift of Jesus. Jesus is the great gift given to us from by God himself. One of the areas you can come out of darkness and embrace great light is to receive Jesus. Once you receive Jesus, you have received salvation. Mm -hmm. And in salvation, deliverance accompanies salvation. Healings accompanies salvation. Prosperity accompanies salvation. Protection and sound mind accompany salvation. It accompanies salvation. The second thing you must do to come out of darkness is to receive the prophet of God that God has sent to you. Mm -hmm. Is to receive the prophets of God. No man has the capacity to free himself in this world. Mm -hmm. If God wants to free a man from bondage, he will send a man that he anoints. Mm -hmm. He will send a man. Jesus said, in, in I think it was in John chapter 1, from verse 6, thereabout. John the Baptist said, I am not the one, I am not Jesus, but I came as a messenger. I came as a witness mm -hmm. to be a witness of Christ. Mm -hmm. So every man of God is not Christ. Mm -hmm. Men of God are witnesses. We are here on earth to be a witness of Christ. And it is your duty to respond to the witness of mm -hmm. the men of God about mm -hmm. Christ mm -hmm. by embracing Christ. Lastly, what must you do to embrace great light? Receive his word as a final authority over your life. Wow. You must receive the word of God. The Bible you see is the solution to the word. The day you take the Bible out of the word, the word we, 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 we capsize. So the word of God is the final authority. Mm -hmm. Every time you are privileged to receive the word, don't push it aside. Receive it. Receive it as the final authority over your life. These are the only areas and the only thing you need to do 
that will bring you out of darkness into embracing a great light. The greatest gift that have happened to humanity is having God sending us his son, Jesus. Last week, Sunday was Easter, you know. Mm -hmm. And what is Easter? Easter is all about the death, mm -hmm. the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Yes. That was the greatest gift that God sent to us by sending us his son, Jesus, to come and suffer for us and die for us and be buried and then resurrected. Mm -hmm. And by his resurrection, when we receive him, they don't know anything around us that is dead is possible to resurrect. Amen. I bring you good news. Mm -hmm. What is the good news? Jesus is that great light. Don't stay there and be wallowing in darkness. Don't stay there and, and be, be, be smoking, be drinking. You have been thinking, how do I come out of it? Just accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. If only you can accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I tell you the truth, there is power enough in Jesus Amen. to set you free. Wow. God bless you. Amen. Bless and you. I know you'll be helping someone there to receive to receive Jesus and understand how to receive them, uh, Jesus. Well, uh, as we will be winding up the program. Yes. But in the meantime, we will be taking a break. Mskizaji, tokona chukwa pumzika, toka ingia katika awa nyingine, awa ya pili, ya Urban Gospel Reloaded, katika awa hii, tokona uh, sehemu ya testimony, my story, my testimony. Yes. Pastors, we have so many stories, and our stories have turned out to be testimonies in, in, in future. Uh, and you know, I know that you also come from somewhere. You yes. have a story yes. that God has done in your life, yes. and you will be sharing that with the listener, and you will be sharing that with us. And I know that my listener today is going to be blessed a lot. Mwangaza na jinsi uh, Yesu anaondoa giza kwa kutumia mwangaza using the light uh, Yesu anaondoa anaondoa giza uh -huh. Yesu mwenye akiwa ni mwangaza this power in the name of Jesus yes. na hapo hapo tulia tuingie madukani tulipe madeni kiasi alafu tutarejea na testimony my story is my testimony Nimetumia radio 89.7 FM Hatu hesabu miaka wale miongo sisi tu hesabu miezi tu Hii ni mitume radio na kwa sasa tuongoza kwa kutifua vumbi katika nyanja mbalimbali kiuchumi kijamii kidini na kisiasa hii ndio station inayokuwa kwa kasi zaidi kaskazini mabonde la ufa magharibi